an awful lot of y'all have been asking me to speak on this Chris Unbiased situation. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, I just want to say that the only reason that I'm speaking on this topic right now, right, is because my thing, if you follow me, you know that my thing, right, is keeping it real, right? I try and keep it real. I try and be genuine. I try and be authentic with how I feel, what I think. And I don't want to come off as I'm defending Chris Unbiased in any way. I don't want to come off as, and I feel like a lot of people are feeling as if though I remain quiet about the situation, it looks as if though I am in some way, shape or form defending Chris Unbiased and whatever situation is going on currently at the moment as it pertains to Chris Unbiased and this open case that he has going on with the state of Georgia, right? So for that reason, because I don't wanna come off as compromised or as biased towards Chris unbiased because I'm a very neutral person. I try and look at things from all perspectives and me being someone who has and helped raise three younger sisters as well as grew up with a single mother can never ignore the cries for help from another woman. I can't, as much as I can try to, as much as I can't, I can't help but be empathetic towards a woman in a situation specifically. Now, does that, does that mean that I'm automatically believing whatever a woman is saying? No, but at the same time, I can never ignore what another woman is saying simply because she's a woman. And I do recall hearing Chris Unbiden saying something about believe all men and not women or tweeting something of that nature. And that I completely 100% disagree with. Everything should be neutral. We should look at things from all perspectives and not believe anybody until enough proof or evidence has been shown and or demonstrated to whomever you're trying to convince that you're not lying to or that you're telling the truth to. Whoever you're trying to convince to, as long as you produce enough, of, oh, that's how it goes. So again, in this situation, I'm only speaking on it because I don't want to seem as if though I'm defending Chris Unbiased by staying quiet, because that's not what that means at all. And, and if in any way, shape or form, I did believe or was fully convinced that Chris Unbiased would do such a thing, I would immediately denounce Chris unbiased. It's funny because some people act as if though I'm so close to a Chris unbiased that I wouldn't even, that I wouldn't like cut ties or denounce or speak on and completely bash and destroy Chris unbiased for having done such a thing, which I absolutely would, bro. I absolutely would, bro. Absolutely would, bro. But if you guys really know me, you guys know that I'm not quick to believe whatever, that's actually part of my whole thing here is I'm not quick to believe whatever narratives or whatever things are being put out there, like in battle rap. So this is why I'm addressing the situation, bro. But I also see, it's funny because I see in my comments, people, and I'm not gonna specifically mention you in my comments begging for my attention, bro. I see you in my comments begging for my attention. I will never acknowledge you as much as you guys, right? The Powerpuff Girls acknowledge me as much as you guys may slander me, as much as you guys may take time and energy out of your day to discuss me and my channel and my growth and what I'm doing here. I will never acknowledge you guys. You guys are a waste of time and a waste of energy, bro, and always will be. 
You guys will remain that way. Even if it turns out that it is 100% true that Chris Unbiased did all this and is a monster, bro. You guys will still be losers, bro. That's how it'll remain. You can continue begging for my attention all you want. That's where it's going to remain. We have completely different purposes as it pertains to what we do. I try and keep battle rap real, honest, and genuine, bro. You guys want to destroy it. You guys want to destroy people. That's your purposes. For views and clicks, which is absolutely pathetic. But anyways, before I even discuss the Chris Unbiased situation, let's hear what the alleged victim has to say. And I say alleged because, bro, and again, I repeat, I am completely empathetic and even sensitive to what women say. I damn near raised my three younger sisters. There was no father around with a single mother. That's just how it was, bro. You know how many times I got into altercations and fight defending and fights defending and protecting them? Like that's just what I was built to do. That's what my heart tells me to do. So in this situation, I have to hear what she has to say. But one of the things that concerns me is the fact that she comes out because she comes out and starts speaking about this because she finally gets wind of what the Powerpuff girls or these other people that are unfortunately, and that unfortunately blog in the battle rap culture were doing one or two years ago. She finally caught wind of what, was, of, of what they did because she's not somebody who was in the battle rap culture. So she's not aware and or familiar with the fact that this triangle or trifecta of guys that were, you know, trying to prove that Chris was guilty before the courts could, she didn't know that these guys were discussing her life. You know what I mean? She didn't know that they were discussing this potential case and this thing that was going on and that was such a hardship in her life. She didn't know that. So when she finally caught wind of that and saw some of these videos is when she started speaking out and discussing these things. And one of the things that concerns me about this as much as I empathize with what she's saying here is that she also mentions that Chris moved two houses down from her. It turns out that Chris does not live two houses down from her. It turns out that Chris doesn't live anywhere near her. He may have at some point in time in the past, but he does not live anywhere near her currently. So this is one of the things that concerns me about what's being said and what's happening right now. Let's hear what she has to say, though. Mm -mm. I got a in 2015 and I was 20 years old. I'm 27. This nigga has been stalking me ever since then i wasn't even the one that took him to court once again the state picked it up the state took him to court the state took him to court not me i didn't even press her I, I did the right kid everything i didn't press charges on him i have been trying to let this go and live my life because i'm fucking terrified you feel me i'm fucking terrified of this man this nigga after he attacked me two years later he attacked two women a day of fucking park a day of fucking park he attacked the stripper and then he attacked a whole nother woman and drug her in her fucking car down the street this nigga is dangerous he stole her phone and when the police went into his house they found multiple burner phones multiple burner phones multiple this nigga is dangerous he attacks sex workers what he is saying in the case is that i was a sex worker me and the other women were sex workers and even if that one girl was a stripper or that we were sex workers that does not mean take you have the right to sit here and take people people's autonomy he was running a fake uber and a fake um taxi taking people's pussy like you feel me out here and he's been doing that for years i do not know why he moved down the street for me but i feel like it has something to do with the fact of you feel me? I my DNA was the one that got him caught. My DNA was the one. My police guest was the one who got him caught. The other victims ain't. You feel me? And even then, the other victim he drug this one lady down the fucking street at a fucking club. They the it was witnesses outside of the club watching him drag this lady down the fucking street, bro. This nigga's dangerous, bro. This nigga's dangerous, bro. That's the alleged victim that is part of this ongoing case 
that has to do with Chris on bias. There's just... It's tough because the main reason that this is tough, bro, is because... And the only thing... Bro, it's like, it's tough to discuss because... No new facts or information have come out for this case, right? Like what she, like nothing, there's nothing like new that was brought about. And at the same time, Chris is, is free in the streets and has not been found guilty as of yet. Which is why it's like, it's tough. It's tough because it's like, yo, this guy can either be a complete monster or this guy can actually be found to have been innocent of whatever these crimes are. And that part of this whole thing is what hasn't happened yet. That's, that's what hasn't happened yet. Which is why it's so difficult to try and even start to determine whether or not this man is actually guilty of, of such an atrocious and disgusting act, bro. Because it's like, yes, even I would feel some type of way about myself having even had Chris in my intros if it turns out that this man is actually guilty bro of these types of things bro I would absolutely I would be disgusted with myself for having considered Chris to be an acquaintance even I don't think people understand that like But again, it's hard to also just say that somebody's guilty and call somebody a monster when they have not been proven guilty of being said monster. I feel like that's also monstrous, bro. That's also an act of evil. Because imagine if the man is innocent. Imagine if it goes to court and it's completely dismissed. Then how are people going to feel and or respond and react to that? That's why this is so crazy to me. Because this has to do with somebody's real life, bro. Not just one, but multiple people's real lives, bro. And the fact that so many people could just come out and be so black and white about the situation when the situation is not black and white. Again, I want to repeat to people, bro, that if it turns out in any way, shape, or form, bro, that this man is actually guilty of this, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Bro. That would, that would not only mean that this man is guilty of this, but that would mean that Chris Unbias is a pathological liar, bro. A psychopath. That's what it would mean. Because if he is guilty, and it turns out that the man is guilty, that means that he just very comfortably got in front of can the camera all that time in front of us day after day and completely was lying to our faces, bro, and manipulating us, bro, and making us believe something that wasn't true if it turns out that this man is guilty. So if this man is guilty, bro, it goes even beyond those monstrous acts. It goes to the point where, bro, you were comfortable enough to lie to an entire community that supported you day after day after day. The fact that somebody can do that, bro, makes them psych psychopathic. I believe that's the, that's the term that describes that type of situation, bro. Where you could just be so comfortable, bro. If you could just, you could just do crazy things and then just go through everyday life like everything is just normal, bro. That's what that would all mean, bro.
I was trying to wait because shout out to my man, John Real. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to wait on, he mentioned that Chris was going to drop because Chris told him that he was going to drop something regarding the situation yesterday on Saturday. I was waiting on that to make this video because I wanted to make a determination to see how I felt about Chris responded to the situation. That was going to help me pretty much determine or help me to determine what's going on. Whether this man is lying, bro, or this man is being honest. I don't know. I pray to God, bro, that we're being honest and we're not attempting to destroy a man. And I pray to God that this man did not assault these women, bro, and do what he's been accused of doing, bro. Because if so, Chris deserves much more, bro, than jail time, bro. And I'm going to keep it completely tall. I'm going to keep it 100, bro. I'm going to keep it tall like Twerk said the other day when he tried to justify his failure of a career, bro. I'm going to keep it tall, bro. You deserve more, bro, than jail time if you actually, bro, were out there, right? Driving a fake Uber and manipulating sex workers, right? And assaulting them, right? Just out here thinking you could just do whatever you want. That's crazy to me, bro. That, that would be crazy. So I pray to God, bro, that when this case goes to fully the court, bro, that they don't say it. That, that, that. Oh, man. Bro, I don't, I don't even want to. Because, bro, again, I would be ashamed of myself, bro, for not having seen through. And I pride myself on seeing, like, real and authentic in people, bro. And if I didn't see through that, bro, and see that, that, that this man really did that stuff, bro, I'd be ashamed of myself. I would be ashamed of myself. I would be ashamed of myself. And that reminds me one more thing, yo. It's funny because some of you guys noticed that I took Chris and Bias out of my intro. It's funny because that was a coincidence. That had nothing to do with that whole situation that just started popping off about Chris and Bias a few days ago. That had nothing to do with them. It's a coincidence because a couple of days before that whole thing started popping off, somebody in my comments made a really good point. They said, take out the intro. You know what I'm saying? And it, it'll be better if I just get straight to it. You know what I'm saying? And I thought that was a very good point because I took a look at my intro when I uploaded my next video and I noticed my intro was almost a minute long. And that might, some people will, might lose interest in even watching the video if the intro was too long. So that's why I decided to shorten the intro. And if you notice, I'm not capping about that. If you notice, I didn't just take Chris out of my intro. I took math out of my intro and math is my, my guy. You know what I'm saying? I took math out the intro and I also took out my uh, music intro, the beat that introduces the TBB, my own personal music intro. I took all that out. I didn't just take Chris out. So it was just pretty much a coincidence that a couple of days after I took Chris out of my intro, this whole thing started popping off. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, nah, I probably would have still took, you know, Chris out of my intro a couple of days later when this started popping off. If I didn't already had taken them, taken them out a couple of days before that, I still would have took them out because of this. But it was just a coincidence that that happened that way. I took Chris, Chris, Math, and my own intro out of my entire intro a couple of days before this started popping off. Then it started popping off and people mentioned that. I was like, oh, that's crazy how the universe works. Something about the universe, besides that comment with that person that told me I should shorten my intro, was like, you should probably get rid of this. You know what I'm saying? Because it is repetitive. I get it. A lot of you guys that follow me already know the Math drop. You know what I'm saying? The Chris drop. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about me and Chris is, bro... I never even met Chris, bro. Like, I don't know Chris like that at all, bro. Some people, some people, because Chris gave me a drop, some people think that we got some kind of like close knit relationship or something like that. I've gone back and forth with him a couple of times on Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Via voice clips and DMs, you know what I mean? But that's beyond, that's, that's the extent of my communication and relationship with Chris Unbiased be outside of YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never met Chris. I don't have a personal relationship with Chris. I He gave me a drop, bro, when I started YouTubing, bro. He gave me a drop, bro, and shouted me out, bro. To me, that was very helpful in my YouTube career because Chris was popular and people were watching Chris. So you can't blame me, man. You got to blame the people that was watching Chris. You know what I'm saying? Where I, where I was like, oh, this guy, you know what I'm saying? Is He's respected. He looks like he's respected. You know, people watch him. So I appreciate the fact that he gave me a drop, you know what I'm saying? When he didn't have to, you know what I mean? And that's 
that's where I got the intro from, man, with Crystal. Some some of y'all think that we like probably like this or something like that, or we chill or something like that, bro. I've I mean, before this whole thing started popping off, man, I probably would have you know gone to you know what I'm saying to go, but you know what I'm saying after 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 this whole thing is coming out, bro, and it's just you, you just got to start second guessing, you know what I'm saying, like anybody because anybody's capable of anything. You don't know. And I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know if this man is guilty. I don't know if this man is innocent. I don't know if she's lying. I don't know if she's being completely 100% honest, bro. I just know currently Chris doesn't live anywhere near her, so I'm not sure where that came from. Maybe she's still under the impression or believes that Chris lives somewhere near her or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I just made this for y'all, bro, that, that know and understand that I pride myself on being genuine bro and keeping it real bro and that's just what it is bro that's just what it is you know what i'm saying let me know what y'all think man you already know what it is it's your boy dro coming at you live and direct from the battle <laughs>